Yeah, hi, hi, my name is Stephen Lee. I am president and CEO of First Financial Bank here in Southeast Texas. And uh, I have with me today a good friend of mine, uh, Rick Deering. Uh, Rick is a public adjuster. His company is Justice Claims. And um, we wanted to spend some time talking a little bit about something that I think all of us are dealing with, uh, unfortunately, again. Although we have developed uh, more of a skill set in Orange County uh, than we would like to have, uh, it never fails that every storm presents unique challenges and every storm presents uh, opportunities uh, for questions that, uh, that need to be answered. And uh, I'm hopeful that uh, as Rick and I talk here uh, today that, that maybe uh, we can give you some tidbits to consider uh, as you address uh, any potential damage from the storm and potential coverage issues and uh, how to navigate what's next in your life as we begin the process of recovering from Hurricane Laura. So one of the things that, that is just, it's, it's very unnerving as you, as you begin the process of recovery and you're re-entering our community after a storm uh, has impacted uh, our area you know, there's, there's always a great deal of anxiety as to what has happened uh, to my property. Uh, and, I, you know, I'll never forget, I, you know, when I was coming in from uh, uh, on Thursday after Hurricane Laura made landfall, uh, I hadn't even gotten into my driveway and uh, gotten out of the car before I had a contractor walking up to me asking me, you know, you know, can I get on your roof? I can, I can fix you. The, the insurance company's gonna cover you, you can get a brand new roof. And I hadn't even, I couldn't even see any visible signs of damage. You know, Rick, I, I didn't even really know how to respond to that. And, you know, uh, tell, tell me what your thoughts are. When you have these contractors and they're so incredibly pushy and convincing as to their ability to solve a problem, you know, how do you recommend uh, people respond to, to, to something like that? First things first, uh, any storm brings those uh, that come and, and offer a valuable assistance to communities that have been severely impacted. Uh, for instance, all of our local contractors may have damaged themselves, and so there are some outside influences that can be used. But the first thing I would say is don't be in a rush to do anything. Yes, it's important that you get your roof temporarily covered so that no more water can enter your building. By the same token, you don't just want anybody climbing up on your property for several reasons. So what I would say is first try to reach out to a local company, find out from your friends uh, and, and contacts that you have who may do these type of repairs. And then second, uh, vet them and vet the guys who are there you know, when you showed up. I had them at my house also. Uh, they didn't want to get on my roof though because it was an 11 on 12 and I didn't blame them. Uh, but the first things first, don't just let anybody up on your roof. Do some checking, ask for references, make calls. Uh, you know, the insurance company understands and expects that it's gonna take you some time to mitigate your damages, which is to get your roof temporarily covered so that no more damage occurs and it's extremely important for protection of your property. But there's By the nothing, same token, you could make a mistake jumping too quickly at that. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing wrong with have, allowing them to get on the roof. Does that, does that obligate you at that point in time to pay them in any way? Or, or because that, that was my concern. I, I didn't know whether to let them, to even let them on my property. I was concerned that once I asked them to get on my roof, at that point in time, I had I had in, obligated myself to, to pay them in some way. Is that the case? Good question. That's not the case. All these guys, including myself, when I'm in a foreign community after damage, we, we solicit, we just offer assistance. Just because we take a look at something or just because that roofer gets up and takes a look, you're not locked in or committed, of course, until you would sign an agreement with them. Now, they will ask you to execute an agreement at some point. There's where I would be a little bit hesitant. You know, pay them for their emergency work, but before you start signing any paperwork about them obtaining the re-roofing job, et cetera, just tell them from the beginning point blank, hey, I would like for you to come 
and, and tarp my roof or cover my roof and drive me in, so to speak, in that language, but I would be noncommittal about hiring them on a permanent basis for roof replacement.